All right, so do some of these asteroids hit the Earth Pole? Oh, yes. <laughs> Cue some <laughs> ominous music. <laughs> this is another science fiction thing. First of all, you fly through the asteroid belt and then meteorites hitting the Earth. But, but this one's true, right? This one does this happen. This is true, and let's have a look at it. So here is some dash cam footage from a Russian car uh, going to work very early in the morning in the city of Chelyabinsk or near that. Yep. And, and so this was back in 2013. That's right. And what you can see is that spot of light. And it gets brighter and brighter and really bright. And that is what a real asteroid strike so this is like. So this was an asteroid that entered the Earth's atmosphere and, and hit. It burnt up in the atmosphere, didn't reach the surface, all the little okay. fragments did. Okay. Now, so the terminology, which is a bit stupid, that basically if it's floating around deep in space and it's big, we call it an asteroid. Yep. Now, the ones that have hit the Earth in recorded history are much smaller than the ones we can see out in space. Yep. Because basically, the one, like the one that landed in Chelyabinsk is only about 10 metres across, most likely. And if something 10 metres across in space, we're not going to see it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tiny. Yep. Yep. So if it's in space, a big one is called an asteroid, a small one is called a meteoroid, but okay. we can't see them. Okay. So we almost never use that word. Yep. And when they hit Earth, a small one is called... A meteorite. So a meteoroid, which is a small lump of rock too small to see in space when it hits the Earth, is called a meteorite. Yeah. And a big lump of rock when it hits the Earth, I don't know if it's got a name, but basically, oh shit. Well, sometimes, we, but sometimes we call them bolides, right, if it's bright enough. Yep. And the meteorite is the physical thing that hits the ground. Yep. Um, here's another shot of Chelyabinsk from a different angle. Yep. So this would be a meteorite hitting the Earth against about a 10 meter size one. So it's kind of a meteor as it's passing through, turning to a meteorite? Mm, yes, so whatever lands on the Earth would be called a meteorite. I mean, don't forget about the terminology. It's space rock, right? Yeah, so they're, all, they're all lumps of space rock. Um, and again, you can see it coming in and getting bright and then burning up. But so you said this one is about 10 meters across in size? As far as you that? can estimate. Yeah. Now things... Um, are, it did a lot of damage. Okay. So Sorry. this didn't hit really the ground, or at least small fragments The problem of was it. that as it blew up in the atmosphere, still some way up, the blast wave blew out a lot of windows. So the main trouble was people saw this bright light and went, oh, I wonder what that is, came to the window, and then the blast wave hit a few seconds later and got glass in their Cause, eyes. Because this thing is still traveling very, very fast, right? Yes, I mean, orbital speeds, you've... So you, so you have... Tens a, of kilometers a second. That's right. So you have something traveling, you know, tens of kilometers a second, 10 meters, Pretty heavy, because even though it's 10 meters, these things are very solid, thrown at the Earth, so it actually essentially almost explodes in the Earth's atmosphere. That's right. And these things happen all the time. They're yep. called, if it's just explodes somewhere, we call it a bolide. Yep. Bolide, it's a stupid terminology. Space bolide, rock, it's a meteorite, yeah. it's another space rock, it's the Earth. Um, and the, these are picked up by the, certainly by the American uh, defense satellites, whose aim is to spot weapons testing and launching rockets, but they also pick up these flashes. And here are the flashes all over the world in a particular period. Yep. Um, and these are just probably 10, 20 meter sized lumps of rock, most of which hit the middle of the ocean, no one ever sees them. That's Sometimes right because... you see the flash, yep. and rarely, it's, most of these are probably just one or two meters across. Yep. The Chelyabinsk is a relatively big one at 10 meters, which is why it did a fair bit of damage. That's right. But things that big land on Earth probably every few decades, and, and, so, and probably so, mostly land in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where no one sees them. And so the bigger the circle, the more energy that is released when it hits. And in fact, I think the Hiroshima scale is about 63 of these gigajoules, so it's actually not even as big as the biggest circle. So these can actually emit a lot of energy when they hit. That's right. Um, mostly they, they burn up in the atmosphere. Yep. Sometimes they hit the ground. This is a Wolf Creek crater in Western Australia, yep. and this was also probably caused by a 10 meter size. In this case, it was a stony, um, right. a metal 10 meter one, which is why it was denser and why it actually managed to make it through the atmosphere and produce a crater. Yep. Whereas probably the one that would land over Chelyabinsk or didn't land over Chelyabinsk was maybe a carbonaceous chondrite or a stony one that broke up in the atmosphere. That's right. Um, this is what interesting me, uh, a lot of the Aboriginal tribes around there, as I think was talked about in the indigenous astronomy part of the course, yep. actually have legends about something falling from the sky and causing flames and so on, even though this eruption was tens of thousands of years in the past, this explosion. Exactly. So I, I, think there's the, the yeah, I think memory. there's even some stories about they knew not to drink the water from there because the water had a lot of metal in it and the metal would poison you. So there's actually recorded human history of these strikes on the earth. Yes, though uh, certainly in the... Uh, non-oral written history, yep. there are no cases of asteroids leaving big craters. But yep. it does happen, we see the craters. The 
The most violent eruption, which is well documented, was uh, the Tunguska in 1908. So, so this is another Russian one? Yes, I, and it's not just because God hates Russians. I think it's because uh, Russia is very large. It's a right, large it's... amount of surface area, and the bigger your surface area, the more likely it is that things will hit it. In fact, as you showed, right, more of those hit the ocean. It's just there's no land on the ocean, so we yes. don't see them. This is an area in Siberia, a luckily uninhabited area. In this case, it was probably about 50 metres big. So this was m about five times or so bigger than that Chebolinsk one in 2013. Much bigger than Chelyabinsk. And it again exploded in the air, so it yep. probably wasn't a hard metal one. It was probably something softer and crumblier. And the blast wave flattened 2,000 square kilometres of pine forest. And so this, you said, was early 1900? Yeah, 1908, I think it was. So... So we see kind of the impact then that these still not big asteroids, meteors can actually do. Yes. Again, something about the size of uh, the uh, Tunguska one, um, but again, made of metal, penetrated the atmosphere and made the Barringer meteor crater in Arizona. That's right. It's a great place to visit if you're driving along the highway because... I have been there and it is uh, fun to walk around. And they do have a subway even if you need to stop and get some food. And of course, there are bigger ones. Yep. Now, we're lucky that we haven't seen any bigger ones in the recent history. Exactly. This is the Nördlinger Ries in Germany, which yep. is nowadays on the ground rolling fields. But if you look at the topographic map of the altitude, you see this circular low region. And that was probably a sort of 100 meter size meteorite that landed you know, more than 10 million years in the past. I think it's 12 or 16 million years or something ago like that. So now, as we start to go up in that scale, and if we get some of those heavier ones, they can actually kind of do some serious damage on the ground. Yeah, so the bigger they get, the more likely they are to penetrate the atmosphere, yep. even if they're made of something soft and crumbly and not metal, and the more damage they're going to do when they land. Yep. 